This is Mike with Viter Door. Today we're installing a 20 by nine Viter Shoreline Folkestone in Teak Stain with three light windows. To start with the layout on the bottom panel, depending on the width of the door, you're gonna have intermediate hinges. The, the intermediate hinges can run anywhere across the top of the bottom panel. And there's a power band in there that we're gonna screw into. So when, when placing your intermediate hinges, you're gonna take the amount of hinges that's gonna be listed on the engineering sheet, the number of hinges plus one, divided by the width of the door. So on this door, it's every 30 inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my marker, come across and mark 30 inches, all the way across. So your intermediate hinges, you have a fat part and a skinny part right there. We doesn't really matter, but we always put the fat part down on the top of the panel. And basically when we're mounting it, what we're doing is we're gonna, we're gonna hold it right flush, this part right here, with the flush of the panel and your and the mark that you made on this door, it's every 30 inches. That mark, you're gonna center the hinge. And you're gonna set one side. See how it moved. We're gonna loosen it, tighten that down. See how that ended up flush right there. Now we're gonna set the other side. What that does by keeping that flush, it'll make so your hinges are square straight up and down. So when that door folds, it's not gonna make a lot of screeching and grinding sounds. All the tappers that we use on all Corner Brook, Shoreline, and Bridgewaters, we use a 3 8 drive a uh, quarter inch tapper, but if you look at the tapper close, it's got a reverse cup on there that actually bites into the hinges and the struts as you're putting them on. What that cup does is it makes it so you can't strip them out as easy, but it also bites in and holds a lot better. From there, we've got to attach the bottom bracket, press the bottom sill towards the center of the door. I'm gonna set this side first. We're gonna uh, put it in there and we're gonna run a screw right through the bottom right here to make the bottom sill so it doesn't shrink or expand or flow. Like that. So now, we're gonna take the bottom sill and cut, not in the, not in the loop, but, but right here, cut it back. so the bottom bracket fits right in there. So all the bottom brackets have uh, the pin for the cable. None of them have the slip over loops. So you just basically put the pin through, hold it up there, put the clip on, cotter pin, bend that around so it's not in the way when the door goes up. Put that in there like that. So when we're doing this, we like to put one, at least one in the bottom, which is right there. One in the top. And three in the field. Three in the field. Right there, put the bottom roller in. There, and we'll set the top. Set the top fixture bracket, set your top holes first on both of them. And move the roller, make sure we're sliding good, we're good and centered. Then fasten that. And like that. And make sure that roller slides, good to go. So now we're gonna focus on uh, setting the strut. On this door, it's 20 feet wide, we're using three inch struts. Um, with the tappers, we're gonna put three in the end style, one on each side, and then one close to the end of the end style. Um, and then we're gonna fasten the strut straight across to the other side, but we're gonna go every 16 inches alternating top and bottom all the way across there. So I'll show you real quick. Every 16 inches, 16 on top, 16 on bottom. While I'm doing this, I'm actually following the, the pencil groove on the back of the door to make sure the strut's straight. So when 
we put the panel down, first thing we did was center the panel in the opening as far as the width goes. Um, once we got that centered equal amount on both sides, we leveled the section in the center. Um, the doors leveled there. So then we went ahead and mounted our track right on the floor, not having to lift either side up because the door was level. So then we screwed her to the wall and we'll start stacking the rest. So right here, after we set the second panel down, we're gonna look right down the center groove right here on the outside. And you see how it's not lined up right there? We're gonna shift the door until the center is lined up. Once we line up that center, all your themes seams should line up, all your edges. Make sure she didn't move. Kick it in. We're good. So right now we're gonna work on the top panel, laying out where the operator bracket goes. And it's similar to the struts where you just struts and hinges where we're just pulling a measurement. All we're gonna do is pull measurement to the center of the door on the top and the bottom of the panel. And this door's 20 wide, so you're gonna go 10 foot and make a mark, and then you're gonna go to the bottom and go 10 foot, make a mark there, and then when you put your operator bracket on, we'll line it up just like that and put the strut over top of it. Okay, so now that we've got the strut over top of the operator bracket, we're gonna line up our marks there. We're gonna take this tapper and tap it right through the operator bracket, right through the power band, right like that. And then this one, we'll put it there, make sure we're still on our mark down here. Put that and hold it. Then we're gonna do the same thing up here. And then when we put the operator bracket on, we'll put our hinge underneath that and tap that into the next panel down. So when we set the top panel down, we put the opener bracket over top of that uh, next panel down hinge. And we screw through that. Just like that. So when we're hanging tall doors or heavier wide doors, we need to always center support the track. Anything taller than 10 foot and anything wider than 16 feet. Um, center support the track. The two inch track that we do is rated for 1,000 pounds, but we center support everything at 500 pounds, preferably 400 depending on the width. Narrow doors is not as bad, but always need to center support um, if that track's moving at all. If you see any flex downward, need to make sure we center support it.